good people. Hope you're having a good night. Wanted to hop on and talk to you guys about, man, a subject that God has just brought up several times over the last few days. And so um, I assume that it's something that he's wanting to work on all of us with right now. And he's been really talking to me about how there's a difference between guarding your heart and numbing yourself, you know, numbing yourself to the pain, cutting yourself off um, completely and saying, you know what, I've been burned too many times by this person, by this situation. I'm good. It's just me and God. I don't have to have relationships in my life. I don't have to have people in my life. I don't have to have community in my life because every time I try to open up, every time that I try to do something, I get burned. How many of you guys have been there before? You know, I think that's a lot of us actually. And I think that sometimes it's almost easier when it's a non-Christian that does that because we feel like, well, I mean, we know why that happens. You know, they're not close to God. But what happens when it's a Christian who, you know, really hurts you? What happens when it's, you know, a really hard breakup from a relationship and you're dealing with that rejection? And, you know, what happens when you didn't deserve it and you go through a lot of pain because of somebody else's sin? You know, I think in those seasons, if we're not careful, we can be tempted to say, oh, I'm guarding my heart and we can want to block out the rest of the world when we were created to be in community. I think that this is where it's important to talk about how we guard our hearts. Amen. You know, guarding your heart is learning how to not open up to people really deep too soon. You know, I think that um, the challenging part of all of this is, you know, learning who to open up to. And you know what? Here's the deal, you guys. With love, when there's true love in your life, whether it's, you know, friendships that you cherish or, you know, a relationship with your spouse or whatever's going on, you know, when there's love, there's always risk. And people are going to hurt you some because people are imperfect. The only one who's not going to ever hurt you is Jesus Christ. It's God, right? And so, you know, it can be so hard after you've been through seasons of intense pain to numb yourself. And by numbing yourself, you go, you know what? I'm just not going to even try anymore. I'm not going to open my heart up. And I feel like this is applied to a bunch of people in the body of Christ who have come through really traumatic seasons where they've kind of been in shutdown mode and they said, God, I don't even care anymore. I've given up on, you know, being in communion with people, being in connection with people. I've given up on having healthy friendships and God, I'm just done. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And we've labeled it as guarding our hearts. And God is wanting to bring healing, you know, to people who have been through a past season like that. You know, I think it's safe to say that we need to have those confidant people in our life who their actions, not just their words, but their actions have really lined up and, and proven to us, hey, this is a person that has stood by me through thick and through thin. This is a person who has been there for me. This is a person who, you know, I can trust their character because I've seen it over the years, you know. And not everybody deserves to know the most intimate parts of you. And so I think our mistake a lot of times as Christians is we go, oh, that's a, a Christian. And so we assume that they're safe. And so we blab our entire life story. And then we figure that they're human and humans are capable of mistakes. And we get really, really hurt and wounded and burned, especially if it's a person in leadership, hello, um, that really messed up and we feel like really did us wrong, right? And so it's hard, whether it's a relationship breakup that you've been through that was really hard whether it's being wounded by someone, you know, in leadership in your personal life, whether it's betrayal by a friend, you know, we all walk through these seasons where we can be tempted to shut down and to numb ourselves from the pain. And so I think that there's different coping mechanisms that people use. The first coping mechanism is once people get done with a relationship, a friendship, and it doesn't go the way they want it to, they never process it and they just immediately hop into the next thing. So what they're doing is they're never getting to the root issue of what caused that thing to mess up in the first place. And so they run around with all this baggage and they bring it into the next relationship and that falls apart and they never address that their heart is hurting. They never address those emotions that they really needed to process from the last thing that they just went through. So it brings this new baggage into the new relationship and often what happens is we can be tempted to cast blame on that other person and go, it's all their fault. I just keep dating crazy people. I just keep interacting with crazy people. And all the time we've never allowed 
allowed God to process that stuff in us. We've never allowed him to heal the pain. We've never allowed him to yank that Band-Aid off and to really remove that numbness that we've tried to bring in so that we don't have to address that thing because it hurts too bad. Who am I talking to today? You know, I think that a lot of the time God kind of wants to treat our wounds almost like, let me give you an analogy here. You know when you get a cut or a scrape and you pour alcohol on that wound because you don't want it to get infected, hydrogen peroxide, whatever you got around? It doesn't feel good, right? It stings when that antibiotic, when that whatever it is, that cleansing agent that you pour on that wound actually hits it because the property of that thing is to clean out the old stuff and it just doesn't feel good in that moment, right? You guys ever, you know, used hand sanitizer when you've had a paper cut? You may not have even realized you had a paper cut, but when that antiseptic hit the paper cut, you went, oh my word, this is so painful, right? You know, it's like, how can a little bitty paper cut hurt so bad, right? I think that a lot of us, when we come through traumatic seasons with relationships of any sort that we've had struggles with or whatever, what we're tempted to do is to not pour that antiseptic on it. We're tempted to not allow God to come in to pour that cleansing agent over that wound. And as a result, it can get infected. And it can cause us to not be open to new, you know, relationships that God has for our life, new friendships that God has, new opportunities. You know, your relationships can even affect business stuff. You know, if we don't allow God to really come inside of us and to, you know, deal with the hurt and to deal with the pain and to cleanse us and to prepare our heart for the new. You know, I think a lot of the times we wait on other people to make it right when we've gotten through a relationship that was really tough when it's dead when it's already over you know it's different for couples who are actively in a relationship sorting through stuff that's different but i think a lot of times what we wait on is we wait on that other person to fix it a lot of the time when something is already dead, God's moving on, you know, and we're, we're just waiting and we're sitting on that thing. And God's saying, no, 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 I want you to run to me. I'm going to fix it, you know, and whether I fix it by shutting the door to that relationship in your life or whether I fix it by bringing something new into your life, will you trust me? Will you allow me to have that ouchy moment with you where I pour that antiseptic on that wound that you've been carrying around in your life so that you can step into that new season so that you can experience the best that I have for you. I think that so many people are hanging on to something dead. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, a dead tree, you know, tree branches that are dead, they're not fruitful, right? It's not going anywhere. It's weighing the tree down. And you know, it's if, if, if it's bad enough on certain plants, if you allow that deadness to continue, it can contaminate the rest of the plant, right? And so that's why, you know, God talks about, you know, he's constantly pruning us. He's constantly removing that dead stuff from our life. But I th here's the deal about God as well. Holy Spirit is a gentleman, you know, and God is not a person who's going to force himself on us, you know? And so I think that a lot of the time we have to be willing to open up to God and say, you know what, God, my coping mechanism getting through this traumatic event that I just went through in this relationship and this event that happened to me in my past life was I numbed the pain. I didn't want to deal with it. It hurt too bad to process. But God, I don't want this thing, this dead thing that I've been holding on to over here to hold me back from the blessing that you want to bring into my personal life. Amen. So often we're holding on to dead stuff and it's preventing God from bringing that new exciting thing that he has for your life. And we're not allowing him to process that stuff because it hurts in the moment, right? You know, just like pouring that alcohol on that wound, you know, it hurts. But if we're not, if we're not quick to allow God to do that, suddenly that wound becomes infected. It becomes more complicated. It spreads into other areas of our lives. And before we know it, we have a big problem and it takes longer for God to pull out those pieces of infection in our life. And it takes longer for him to cleanse us so that we can receive the best that he has for us. Amen. And so all of that to say, you guys, God is wanting to bring the new into so many people's lives. So many of you guys have been through legit traumatic experiences in your past. And you've been through stuff and you said, God, I don't know how I could trust people again. I don't know how I could trust people in this area of my life. It's so much easier to just shut down. You know, you're the one I can always count on, God. It's just you and me. I don't need anybody else in my life. Let's just do this thing together. And, you know, God's saying, I'm glad that you're putting me first. However... 
that attitude is not super healthy. You were made to be in communion and in relationship with other people in your personal life. And you know, I think that um, a lot of times we get scared when we come through those seasons. And God's saying, I want you to open your heart up again. And you know, here's the root, you guys. When we're just putting our full trust in other people, you know, we're going to be disappointed. But when we put our trust in God first, those people can fail us. But because we're rooted and grounded in the Father, because we're rooted and grounded in God first, when those disappointments come in our life, it's not quite as traumatic. Not to say it doesn't still hurt. It does still hurt. You know, betrayal hurts. Hard things hurt in our personal life. But when we're keeping our focus on Jesus first, we go, you know what? My confidence doesn't have to be in that other person. Because regardless of what happens, Jesus, I know that you and me are okay. And when we come in from the perspective of my job is to love on people, you know, and you know, when we learn to have grace towards other people, it kind of helps us to have a little bit more grace towards ourselves sometimes too. You know, I think for a lot of you guys, you need to forgive yourself. You've been beaten up on yourself from situations that happened in a past season in your personal life. You have been absolutely beating up on yourself for the way that relationship went, the way that church experience went, the way that that, you know, friendship went, whatever it is, you have just been absolutely walking in unforgiveness towards yourself. And I think that a lot of the time we have to be willing to get with God to allow him to pour that cleansing agent on us and to work through this stuff. And then finally, we have to be willing to forgive ourselves. Amen. You know, we've got to be willing to say, I'm not just going to numb myself to this anymore. I'm going to allow myself to experience life again. I'm going to allow myself to open up my heart again. I'm going to allow myself to take chances again, because regardless of whether or not I get hurt again, I know the one who my trust is in. And I was called to be in community. I was called to be in relationship with other people in my personal life. And I'm not going to let this thing continue to keep me in my past and prevent me from stepping into my future. Amen. So don't numb your heart today and call it guarding your heart. There's a big difference, y'all. Amen. Hope you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you soon.